Okay. <coughs> so, let us try to bound this term here we have probability mu i hat minus alpha log t divided by t of t minus 1 that being greater than mu i. So, just reorganize this in a format which is similar to us want this to be okay. <coughs> so, before we apply our concentration inequality on that we have to be a bit careful. So, what we know about our if x is a sub Gaussian noise. So, if you have a n samples of the sub Gaussian noise or a sub uh, samples from a sub Gaussian distributor and uh, we want to know uh, how is this quantity distribute uh, how is how is this error probability we know the bound is like exponential if if my uh, distributions are all uh, sub gaussian with sub gaussian parameter 1 then these are and uh, this based on n samples we know this is the bound right which we have already shown so when we applied this concentration bound here we knew that there are exactly n samples that are used been used to estimate this parameter mu i the estimate mu i hat is based on n samples okay and then we had in this bound here okay but uh, i can't treat in this case this to be an alpha in this case and apply a bound like this here why is that because this number of rounds here right this mu i hat is estimated based on this t i number of rounds sorry number of samples and this t i number of samples till round t minus 1 that is a random quantity it is not like a fixed one. So, I have to take into account this randomness in t i before I can go and apply this concentration bound here. So, how to do that how to get rid of the randomness in this okay. So, one possibility is that you take all possible values that T i would can take and then use uh, this bound on those specific values of numbers okay. So, what are the possible values of T i? We know that it has to be something between 1 to t minus 1 right because either I would have played one round at most or uh, I would have at least or I would have played uh, the same arm for all the slots till t minus 1. Now, taking that into account this bound we are going to write it as there exist s between 1 to t minus 1 such that mu i s minus mu i is greater than alpha log t divided by s here. Now, recall the notation that I introduced at the beginning of the class what this mu i hat i s means this is that my the estimate for i term is obtained exactly using s samples and uh, that is why this s is also coming here in the denominator. Now, given that s is a deterministic quantity here then I know how to apply my concentration bound on this, but before that I need to deal with this like this I have to since I am dealing it with all possible values of t s. I have this, so I am further going to apply union bound on this to get right. And now this is a somewhat 
we know how to deal with this and uh, this quantity is upper bounded as x equals to 1 t minus 1 or this this is exponential and uh, this estimates are based on s samples. So, this is s times and epsilon is this quantity here. So, I am going to take alpha log t by s and there is also denominator s here. And uh, this will give me x equals to 1 to t minus 1 uh, after knocking of s. So, this will give me uh, after simplifying I will get t to the power minus alpha by 2. Okay. <coughs> this I could further simplify it as so, I am adding, so this s, this is the t term here and the running variable here is s 1 to t minus 1. So, this term get added t minus 1 times. So, I will just make it, uh, uh, this add this term for t number of rounds and I will get t to the power minus alpha times to t. This will give me t to the power 1 minus alpha by Now, I am going to choose specifically alpha to be equals to let us say uh, 6. Okay. Now, if I choose this alpha to be 6, this bound I am going to get is like 1 upon, so alpha 1 by 3 and I am going to get it as t equals to 6. Now, what I am interested in? I am interested in now computing this probability now, I have actually computed this probability, I have had a bound on this probability now through this and now I want to compute its value over t running from summing it over t from 1 to n. So, let us do that now. Now, so we have that t equals to 1 to n probability that i t equals to i and 1 holds we have upper bounded as t equals to 1 probability that 1 holds and uh, this one we have already shown that t equals to 1 to n and this quantity is we have shown to be exactly upper bounded by 1 upon t square. Okay. Now, so this series, this series here, when it is summated from t equals to 1 to n, we do not have a closed form expression, but when we, we can bound it. So, when we bound it, let us say by letting t equals to 1 to infinity, we know a uh, value for this series and that is pi square by 6. Okay. So, similarly, you can verify this term here, the second term here, by going through exactly the same step. You can verify that this is can also be upper bounded similarly as pi square by 6. Okay. So, now putting all these things in my bound on the expected number of pulls of arm um, i, I will get expected number of pulls of i is what is u? Let me put it back the value of u I have used. The u I have used to be this quantity plus the first term here ended up yielded me pi square by 6 
and uh, the second term also added a similar term. So, if I just simplify this, this gave me 4 alpha log n plus pi square by 2. <coughs> so, finally, what we have shown here is the expected pulls of the suboptimal arm i is bounded by this quantity here that is 4 alpha log n by del i square plus pi square 3. Now, we are almost done like once we have this we know already how to get our regret bound right. What is our expected regret or uh, rather pseudo regret of policy u c b or n rounds we have denoted it we know that this is going to be expected number of pulls of um, i times delta i okay and this summation is over 1 i equals to 1 to k. Now, okay, I think I missed. So, when I when I remove this seal, maybe I can add 1 here and this bound still holds. Now, plugging back the value of this from this, I will now take Anyway, I know that del i is 0 for the optimal arm, I will just skip that part. So, taking all the arms which are not optimal, this bound holds and this bound is saying that this is like uh, 4 alpha log n divided by delta i square with delta i plus summation i naught equals to i times delta i into pi square by 3 plus 1. Okay. And uh, just a simplification will give you this quantity here And recall that we got all of this by setting alpha equals to 6 in this fashion. So, if you plug it back here, the bound I have here is finally uh, 24 times i naught equals to i star alpha log n by delta plus this quantity here. And further, if you want to further replace suboptimality gaps of each arms by the suboptimality gap we have defined earlier, this problem can be further bounded as this is going to be 24 times k minus 1 alpha log n by delta plus this one. And uh, if you look in this problem in terms of n, this problem is sorry, I do not have alpha here, I have plug, plugged in 6 for alpha. So, this problem like grows like logarithmic in n, and in terms of number of arms, it is like grows like k minus 1 or like almost like linearly in k. So, order wise, if you ignore this term here which is usually small because this suboptimality is gaps could be uh, I do not know whatever whatever be the suboptimal gap at least it is not growing it is like a constant term here right uh, that uh, depends on your problem. 
and uh, if I write order wise in terms of my k and uh, number of rounds, this problem I can write it as a C log order k times log n delta. This we have already discussed when we introduce this algorithm. So, finally, we ended up showing that my regret of UCB algorithm is order k log n by delta or more precisely it is given like this okay? and it is clear that my UCB gives sublinear regret. Okay, now, here the problem, the regret bound we have it depends on the specific instant of the problem. right? So, recall that we said that for a when we say a problem instance is fixed that is the mean values associated with the distributions are fixed. Okay? If that is the case once the mean values are fixed the associated gaps are fixed and this bound uh, is in terms of this gaps and such bounds we call it as problem dependent bound or instant dependent bound. So, once you fix a problem here that is your bandit instance this del i is fixed and you are expressing it in terms of those values. Now, you may be interested in now knowing okay, this bound is logarithmic in n when it the bound is expressed in terms of the problem specific constants. What if I do not know what uh, uh, what is the underlying problem instance and I want to get a bound which is holds uniformly across all the problem instances. Okay. Such bounds we are going to call it as problem independent bounds. Now, how to get a problem independent bound that is a bound which holds irrespective of what is your problem instances. <coughs> so, that we can get by the same analysis, but bit exploiting our uh, regret decomposition theorem a bit better. So, what is the regret decomposition result we have? We have that for any policy pi and f we know that the regret can be defined as where expectation of T i n is the expected number of pulls of i term. Right? Now, can we write this bound, use this bound to get a bound which does not depend on this delta i's that is the problem instances. Okay? So, let us see how we can do that. So, this expected term here we are going to write it as T i n and expected value of T i n. This is just like rearrangement, nothing changes here. And once I do this, I am going to apply Cauchy short inequality on this. by treating <coughs> this quantity as let us say b i and by treating this quantity as a i. So, we and uh, treating 
this a i as the ith component of a vector and that vector is of dimension k. So, treating this a to be a i and b to be b 1, b 2 uh, to b k. So, this is like uh, now uh, where a i is defined like this and b i defined like this. So, this is the inner product between these two quantities and by Schwartz inequality we know that this is upper bounded by sum of square of this term right. So, because of that the first term is going to give me T i n i equals to 1 to n and the second term will give me <coughs> i equals to 1 to sorry this should be k here i equals to 1 to k expectation of T i n times del i square. Okay. Okay, now I know that the expected number of pools of arms i when I summed over all arms it has to be equal to n right. And what about this term? Let, let me keep it like that for time being now. Now, we have already the bound on expected value of T i n, let us plug in that here. So, once we do that, our bound is to be like n, what is the value of equals to k. So, I will again, since for the optimal arm, the delta is going to be 0, I will only consider i not equals to i star. And uh, for this, we know the bound is like four alpha. Now again, the delta i square plus phi square c plus one divided by delta i square. So, now if you simplify this, you are going to get n i not equals to i star, this gets knocked off here, you run log alpha, okay, and then we will have this another term n times i not equals to i star phi square by c plus delta i square. Okay, so now further simplifying it, this will give me 4 k minus 1, sorry, and 4 alpha log n plus n times this I will keep it just like that. Okay. So, now notice that this delta i square got knocked off with this delta i square term here and uh, we are left with del i's only in this part of the bound here. Okay, now, we are assuming that my distributions are all sub Gaussian right after uh, centralizing them and uh, each one of them without centralizing them they have their own mean and uh, they have some Associated sub uh, optimal some 
some suboptimality gaps here and because of my sub Gaussian distributed with the non centered version of this can any mean value which could be between 0 to infinity this del i can also be any values any real numbers. But however, suppose we assume my problem class is such that all the distributed all the distributions are such that their support takes their support is over some fixed interval. Let us say the support of the distribution Okay. So, because of this if, if this is the case then all mu i's are also in the interval 0 1 and so are delta i's. Okay. So, in this case we could further upon point these quantities by replacing this delta i squares by 1 and in we will get a bound which is n times k minus 1 times phi square f which is dot. So, now for the class of all distributions for the class of my bandit instances where my distributions have this support 0 1. Now, we have this bound which does not depend on what is the particular problem instance from this class right and it this upper bound only depends on my number of arms this alpha whichever I chose in my algorithm and the number of rounds for which I run. So, such bounds we are going to call it as problem independent bounds. That is, if we can give our bound which does not depend on which particular instance of the problem we are talking about. The bound, so just to be clear, contrast this bound here with the bound I have got here for a special case of distribution with bounded support. Here, my bounds did depend on my specific problem instance. The problem instance are coming through here, delta i's and also or a delta here whereas this deltas are not here now in this case in this problem dependent bound i we got a regret bound which is of the order k log n whereas in this version of problem independent bound this regret is of order square root n k minus. So, this is the main difference between problem independent and problem dependent bound. In the problem dependent bound the problem specific problem instance comes in the picture and usually we get a regret bound which is of the order k log n whereas, in the problem independent bound we will get regret bonds which is of the order square root n times k minus 1. Okay. So, both of them are sub sublinear in this case this goes very fast when you divide by n it goes very it, it, it decays very fast to 0, but uh, this one bit decays slowly. So, that is obvious because you are uh, this bound holds irrespective of what is your problem instance whereas, this bound does not depend this this depends on the specific problem instance whereas this does not depend on which problem instance so this this holds uniformly across all bandit instances okay so we'll stop here uh, in the next class we are going to see whatever the bounds we have are they really optimal is ucb algorithm is really optimal or uh, we should be uh, thinking some better algorithm okay we'll stop here